That's a conspiracy. Well, as you know, Agenda 21 was put together in uh, 1992, what they called a comprehensive blueprint for reorganizing human society. And uh, they, uh, you know, since since that time, we've watched our, our society be reorganized with uh, comprehensive development plans in the communities, assault on private property rights, uh, the creation of non-elected regional councils that take government farther from the people, literally changing our government, and funding it all through federal grants. And uh, we're seeing our country change. Uh, we started to attack this. Uh, at first, they were very uh, proud of it, and, and you were hearing about it. Nancy Pelosi introduced it into Congress, said it was a comprehensive blueprint. We heard that term over and over again. Then as we began to make some noise about it, suddenly, kind of like Jonathan Gruber, they threw it behind their backs and said, what are you talking about? What, all that innocuous 20-year-old document that doesn't mean anything, it's purely it voluntary. <laughs> yeah. And and so, interestingly, this past September, the UN held yet another one of these mass meetings, and they rebooted it. They changed the name from Agenda 21 to the 2030 Agenda, 17 goals for reorganizing human society. Uh, nothing new in it whatsoever. It's just all renamed, but at least it's not an innocuous 20-year-old document anymore. It's a three-month-old document. Well, you, you know what's, fun, what's interesting, a uh, little supermarket down the street from me, uh, you know, People put stuff in the uh, in the lobby, you know. And there was a little box that said Boston 2030. We want to hear your opinion. Uh, I took a few pictures of it. I said, Yeah, these people. And thankfully, nobody's paid any attention to it. You know, <laughs> they were just sort of left alone. I put in some. I think I put one of your newsletters in there. <laughs> a few other things, you know. I'll tell you what I what, what I think about it. But uh, yeah, so it's alive and well. And now let me ask you. Let's say that uh, boy, you know, this guy Tom Dewey's, He sounds doesn't sound right to me. What? What's what's going on here? Where, where where can you find evidence of this happening in your town? What what kind of things should people look for? Uh, well, literally, uh, I think almost every community in the nation is being faced with trying to you know uh, being forced to put together comprehensive development plans. You'll hear terms like, of course, sustainable development and smart growth. Uh, you'll see new regulations popping up that, that deal with your private property rights. And, you know, the smart growth programs, you, you start to see they put a line around the city and they tell you that no growth can take place outside of that. Uh, that's urban sprawl, uh, so we don't need that. So we end up with this area that's that's a, uh, uh, you know, very precise, precise area. And when populations start to grow, then, uh, golly, uh, the only place you can grow is up because you can't grow out. And this is when we start to see the creation of apartment buildings replacing single-family homes that grow into high-rise apartment buildings. We see this mostly in the cities now. More of the rural areas, you just see it beginning more and more difficult to live in the rural areas. Uh, farmers find themselves under attack, conservation easements to grab the land, banning septic tanks so that you can't live on the land, making it harder, eventually you give up and you move into the city, which is exactly what they want you to do. And this is this is where you start to see it. Now, there is something that's relatively new, this uh, so-called, um, it's a HUD, housing and urban development initiative. I love the term initiative, too, because when you hear the word initiative, it's usually a good thing. You know, some local people are doing something, taking initiative, but when you hear the government say it, it's usually the time to, uh, you know, hold your pocketbooks and your freedom because, you know, something bad is coming down the road. What is this new Obama-driven initiative that plans to resettle people in these nice little rural and suburban towns around the country? Now, this was this was uh, put in, uh, announced in uh, July of uh, this past year. It's 377 pages long. This ruling, and it's called the Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing Rule. And what they're, you know, as they try to explain it, they're talking about how they want to end discrimination, achieve balance, and integrated living patterns uh, for all citizens. And as you begin to look at that, and you think, well, what are they talking about here? Mm -hmm. I, 
of course we all want to be fair. We, you know, we've already got anti-discrimination laws about you can't ban somebody from living in a, in a certain neighborhood or buying a house or something. We hear this. We've been hearing this since the 60s. But all of a sudden, we have a problem here, and they are looking into details for income levels, religion, color, national origin, the people who live in the neighborhood. You know how, you know, back in the last census it was taken, people were very upset because they were asking such personal questions about who lives in the house and what ages are they and what is national origin and all these kinds of questions. Uh, on something that's only supposed to count how many people we have. Yeah, I re- I remember I refused to. Uh, the guy said the guy came up to, up to me, the censor guy. And he said you're you're refusing to comply. I said I gave you the information that the Constitution requires. I said anything more than that, you're you're refusing to obey the Constitution. So what yeah. you're saying is that this census, this all intrusive, what ten page census? How many times you flush the toilet? How many pets do you have? How, many, how, <laughs> how much money you make? What color is your hair? What's your favorite? You know all this crazy stuff. There was a method behind the madness. It wasn't just to help serve the citizens better. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. Uh, apparently these kind of plans have been in place for a while, and and they're getting around to doing this. So they're going through those census uh, records, but they're also, as I understand it, they've got people going door to door asking some of these questions right now, trying to fill in the blanks. And what they're looking for here is the makeup of of the neighborhood. And they find that the neighborhood is out of balance of, you know, they set the the ratios of what needs to be in each of those things, income levels, uh, uh, races, and uh, national origin and so forth. Then their intention is to begin to change the neighborhood, to begin to move people in there to get a balance. This can be done by bringing in subsidized housing, again, the high rises and so forth. But what they're doing is they're plucking people out of low-income neighborhoods and uh, and putting them there. And so what's going to happen here, first of all, this begins to really show that private property rights is a thing of the past, but also property values will begin to go down. So people who have invested their life savings to build a to build a home that they wanted, to live in a neighborhood they wanted to live in, suddenly they are uh, the victims of social engineering and uh, uh, you know, they've got to be in balance. So so you get a let's say they determine where is this arbitrarily who determines what the balance should be? And isn't that what free people are supposed to determine, not, not government bureaucrats? Well, this, this is where it gets interesting, Hal, because we've been warning about Agenda 21 sustainable development policies and, and why they were dangerous. And up until now, at least you had this pretense that the local government had a say in it. You had all these non-governmental organizations, these private groups that were pressuring your elected officials to do things. You had planning organizations, uh, and there were federal agents and so forth in there as well. But but it, it had the pretense that your elected officials could vote on this and, and decide. We know that that's not necessarily true, uh, because one of the things that would happen is community has to put together a comprehensive development plan, and these NGOs, uh, these organizations would come in, pressuring them to do that, and they'd say, no, no, look, here, we've got it all right here in a box for you. You don't even have mm-hmm. to think. It's all right here, and we've got the money for it, too. So, And boom, these guys are rubber stamping this into place. Well, now, any of those communities that took those grants or take them in the future, suddenly HUD comes in and says, hey, you took the grant. We're going to tell you how you're going to do this. And what this has done is it has it is literally destroying local elected government, throwing it aside. Your elected officials who are doing this are voting themselves to be irrelevant. And the federal government comes in and dictates this is social engineering. And, uh, and of course, it's social justice, the, the whole redistribution of wealth thing. But it's absolutely destroying our system of government. So let me let me just let, let's say you go to a town that's in a nice little rural area, not too far from a major city. Let's say twenty, fifty, sixty, seventy miles, and say, "Gee, they're all pasty faces here." You know, it's ninety nine point nine percent or ninety two, whatever the case is, and and you get some free thinking progressives that live in town. They moved in from the city because they wanted to get away from the stuff. Oh yeah, they get on the city council or the town council, and they buy into this. They get their uh, 
they, they, they stack the planning board with their people. Next thing you know, there's a charrette or a visionary session and some nice people from the local university like uh, New Hampshire Listens or one of these uh, entities. And everybody, you know, they're sitting around drinking wine with their berets and uh, everyone <laughs> thinks that they had something to do with this, right? And next thing you know, they've got this thing called the smart growth area and they've got uh, housing money and Section 8 housing and it's all going to be so wonderful and we're going to bring people in and they're going to enjoy the wonders of our little town and also they're going to vote the way we want them to vote. They have no connection to the town. They're cut off from their community, so it's really not going to benefit people who have no ties. And, you know, it's, we, I can't afford to – I'd like to move out to some of these communities. I can't afford to live in Wellesley, Massachusetts. I live in Boston. I wouldn't mind moving to Newton, but I can't afford it, and I'm not complaining about it. I'd rather not really live in Newton, to be honest with you. I like it where I am before. But who cares? Make the community where you are bet better. You know, you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to live in, and I would love to move to a rural area, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Hopefully it will, but I don't expect HUD. I don't expect Obama. I don't expect uh, Donald Trump or anyone else to set me up. If I can afford it, if it's going to work out, it will work out. If, if, and in most of these rural towns, there's not a big economy there. How is an economy you know, it's maybe a rural economy. Maybe there's one or two manufacturing concerns that hire most of the people in town. How are you going to sustain, and sustain in, in the positive sense, in the real sense? You're going to dump 1,000 people in the town of 5,000. And well, they're going to get their Section 8 house. They're going to change infrastructure. How is that going to benefit them? And I've seen some examples of this. Millinocket, Maine. It was a mill town, uh, two mills, one closed down, one operates at a... 15% capacity. The, the, you can get a beautiful Victorian home for $15,000, what would cost you $2 million in Boston. And they're actually bringing people in from New Jersey, welfare recipients, who wouldn't it, because it's cheaper for them to buy a house in Millinocket and set them up there, give them the food stamps and all that good stuff, uh, and then pay, pay the housing in New Jersey. So I've seen examples of that. And what about if they ever grant amnesty to these uh, millions of illegals, where are you going to put them? You're going to put them in these uh, – this is my, my take on it. I, am I out of line here, or do you think – No, and, and, and in fact, as, you know, as I said, as they're, as they're looking at breaking it down by uh, you know, ethnic background and, and income levels and all that, they're going to look at these other neighborhoods, and they're going to say – Oh, you don't have enough Syrian refugees here. You don't have enough of this. You don't have enough of that. And they're going to, you know, start to pour them in there. But, but as you're describing, you know, people wanting to move out to these more rural areas in the cities, as they begin, you know, with a smart growth situation where uh, populations grow and density grows, so single-family homes uh, are outlawed, as they've, they've just announced they're going to do in Seattle, uh, Washington, and they already did it in Portland and other cities. And so now you don't have single-family homes. The only thing you have are apartment buildings. So that means that in those cities where there are single-family homes, those costs are going to start to go up. And, uh, they're, they're, and anywhere you have that, you're finding that housing costs are soaring. And so low-income people certainly can't afford that. And, you know, you're creating a, a new ghetto is what, you, what you're doing with that. And, and the other part of this, this, this is the incredible thing, is this era when all we talk about is everything's racism. I find it incredible that here is a, 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 this, this all-powerful government with these smug bureaucrats in the background making up this stuff, and, and there's 